question about the lesson. Um, I've tried to get through them, and then I always get distracted, and, you know, two, three weeks go by, and I think, oh, no, should I go back to number one now, or can I just, how important is it to go straight through, one day at a time? <laughs> I think in the introduction, he kind of says, uh, just don't do more than one lesson a day. And he also says that if, if you like to, if one lesson is particularly appealing to you, that you really, you know, it seems to be getting at some things really appealing, then you can stay with a lesson for more than one day. So it's not one of these, another ritual where he's like saying, now, you start on January 1st and you go straight through, or, or you, whenever you start, you don't miss a day and this and that. He's saying, um, just try not to do, just don't do more than one, because they're, they are so sophisticated in one sense. They're very simple, and yet they're, they're very um, powerful lessons. And another thing he says is just, just do them. Um, a lot of times, people will go through them and they'll be kind of like, oh, I'm not doing this right, or mm -hmm. I'm just, I, I, boy, did I blow lesson five. I'm going to go right back to one because I, I messed up and I don't want, I don't want to mess up. So this is important. I'm doing Jesus' workbook here, and I just think, <laughs> you know, and, and kind of the underlying belief still gets back to that old thing about like God is watching us, or Jesus is watching us, and, and it's like, I got to do it perfect because you know, gosh, He's watching me, that He knows. It's, it's part of the design that he knows at the beginning that, that there will be things that will come up and resistances. And he knows that when he, he gives you an idea that you're going to forget. You know, so he, and it, it's even like um, the way it's designed is it's like walking, instead of jumping into the deep end, it's kind of like he's designed them to be like going to a wading pool first and, you know, wiggling your toe around and then putting a foot in and kind of any consolation, I did the first 50 lessons about five times. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jump started. <laughs> Stop for six months. And then I, I mean, I should go back to lesson one. Oh, I don't want to go back to lesson one, you know. Yeah. But then I just prayed about it and I thought, no, for me it's right. It's been so long since I did these lessons that I'm going to go back and start over. But that is what everybody does. I think asking internally mm -hmm. about that is so important. And, you know, it's like, there isn't, isn't even any particular way to pick up and begin with The Course in Miracles if you feel guided to do that. I mean, some people feel guided to start with a text. Some people feel guided to start with a workbook. Some people feel guided to start with a teacher's manual. Some people just pop it open wherever and see, you know, what resonates with them. It's like that, that internal teacher that we have with us at all times is, is, is the one, you know, to go to to find out, you know, what's, what's best for you and just kind of see what you're drawn to and how you're drawn to it. Of course, also not to fight yourself, that yeah. if, you, if you're drawn to it for a day or two and then you don't want to look at it for six months, not to fight yourself, you're not quite ready. Mm -hmm. But when you start feeling kind of pulled, and the course isn't for everybody to begin with. Mm -hmm. It states that very explicitly in the course, that it's a path for some people, and it may not be your path. But if you start reading it and it just kind of really calls to you, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you can kind of assume that it is, but even then you just take it at, at, at your own pace. I was going to jump right in and do that workbook right away. I mean, it's, you know, when I first decided to do the course, which was after I met Bill Sedford for the first time, because I wasn't too sure this was from Jesus. I thought, I was out in California, and I thought, you know, this is so California. Here's this lady <laughs> in New York, and she's channeling Jesus, and I'm supposed to believe that this book is from Jesus. And it real, I was like, oh, right, you know. And yet, I, I was really aware at the same time that there was this other voice in me that was saying, I knew it, I knew it, I knew he said something. And I'm like, you know, I get the frantic here, the <laughs> and the whatever. You know, and so I had to go, I actually had to meet, I mean, that was how cynical I was. I had to go meet Bill Sefford, because I knew I'd know if he was a fraud, mm -hmm. you know, or he was a whatever, I would know it. And unfortunately, he died not too long after that, a couple of years later, and I never saw him again. But I had to actually go sit and watch this man and see how peaceful he was, and if he was on a level or if he was just selling another cult or mm -hmm. something. And he just sat there. He didn't even want to be there. He was like, Judy Scotch dragged him there. And he's like, well, like, they may have a question or something. I'd be happy to answer for him. <laughs> he's like, he didn't really want to talk. And then, but he would be very helpful if somebody asked, asked a question. He would be real helpful. And he was just peaceful. You could see it. You couldn't mistake it. It was just like, okay, he just sat there. That was it. He wasn't selling anything. He wasn't pushing anything. Mm -hmm. He just sat there. So then I knew, for me, and I was going to run around and do that Course in Miracles. Boy, this is hot stuff. I mean, once I started reading it, I knew in my heart that it was my path, whatever it was. It was for me. And um, and then I also believed it was from Jesus. And as I started doing it, um, you know, I just found enormous resistance. I mean, I love this book. I mean, I could stay up all night reading this book. 
and yet I'd start to do the workbook lessons and I couldn't get through one day or, you know, or whatever. Or I'd, I'd say, I've got to love this book and I'd set it down and three months later I hadn't looked at it. And I'm like, what? Wait a minute. I, I, and I would miss it. I knew I missed it. But you, your ego just fights you every step of the way. I mean, it just fights you to death on it because it, it is the total opposite, the total thought reversal of everything you have ever been taught in your life. And that's what Bill Setter said really got to him. He's, they were scribing the course, and he was typing the notes that Helen was getting. And at one point, it, it said to him, you know, this course will ask you to challenge every belief you have ever held. Everyone. And he was like, do I really want to do that? <laughs> no. Am I up to this? I mean, it's going to, the laws of gravity, the laws of nutrition, time, space, God, everything. It's about everything we've ever been taught. And it's just the total opposite because, you know, this, this world is so full of the ego that everything we believe, we've been taught by the ego.